What up folks, it's Alex here, and I've got a quick fire video for you today, because we're gonna get through about 25 essentials when editing in DaVinci Resolve. Now this is purely for those video editors, rather than those using Fusion or the Color tab. So we're gonna to stick to the Media tab, the Edit tab, and the Deliver tab. Now this is gonna be really quick, so I'm gonna get through a load of stuff as fast as I can. Don't forget, you can pause the video anytime and all of the timestamps are down in the description below. Let's boot open DaVinci Resolve and get straight to it, shall we? We're gonna start with this, the project manager. You can change the size of your thumbnails using this slider icon up here. You can also reorder all of your projects by clicking on this icon. You can change the look of it. So we've got thumbnails at the moment. If you prefer a list, you can do so by clicking on this icon here. And you can also search through all of your projects using the magnifying glass. Now, if you need to make a copy of a project, you can do so. Simply select it within your project manager, hit Control and C on your keyboard, and then Control and V. And that will make a copy of that project. Now, we've opened the DaVinci Resolve and we're on the Media tab. Now, before you do anything, I always recommend clicking on the cog in the bottom right-hand corner, making sure you're on the master settings and set your timeline frame rate before you do anything. Open up your media storage by clicking on this icon in the top left-hand corner and you should see a list of folder locations on your local PC. Right-click any empty space and you can add a new location. So you can browse to a specific drive or folder where you generally store your media and then it'll be there ready waiting for you whenever you open DaVinci Resolve. You can of course add media to your media pool by selecting it in this storage area and dragging down into your media pool like so. However, you can also add media by browsing to it outside of DaVinci Resolve with a file explorer and dragging it into the media pool. And this also works for folders. So if I drag this glitch folder here, drop it onto my media pool, Anything that's compatible with DaVinci Resolve, so JPEGs, movies, MP4s, audio files, etc., will be added directly into the media pool. Now, talking of folders, if you right click on any empty space, you can add a bin. A bin is essentially a folder, you can give it a name, and then you can drop files directly into that bin to make it a little bit neater and make things a little bit easier to find. Now, we're going to jump straight onto the Edit tab. To add media to your timeline, as you well know, you simply drag and drop. If you don't want to add the entire clip to your timeline, you can just add small sections of it. Double click on your clip within the media pool to open up the preview. Then you can scrub through that preview and then use the I and the O keys. So if I hit I here, I'll add a little point on this timeline and then the O key here. And then that's just the section that will be added to the timeline. So if I click anywhere within the preview, drag down to my timeline, it's just the small section of the clip that I've selected, not the entire clip itself. Another way to add media to your timeline, select the area on your timeline where you want to add the media, grab it from the media pool, and then rather than adding it directly onto the timeline like so, drag it onto the preview, and then you have these options. It's far easier to do it this way rather than having to remember all of the keyboard shortcuts. Now that everything's on your timeline, Move the playhead to where you want it, and then you can use the shortcut Control B to make a cut. Now using the backspace key will delete the clip, but leave an empty space on your timeline. Whereas using the delete key, which is known as the ripple delete, will not just delete the clip itself, but essentially delete that portion of the timeline. So everything to the right will be shifted to the left, like so. You can change the volume of a particular clip by holding your mouse over this line so you see this icon and then you can drag it down and up to adjust the volume. Alternatively, select the track and then head up to the inspector in the top right hand corner, select the audio tab and then you can adjust the volume accordingly. You can also do this for an entire track in one go. On your timeline, head over to the left where here I've got audio one, give that a click and then within the inspector, you've got the track level volume, which can be adjusted. If you've got a clip and you wish to delete the audio but keep the video, simply make sure it's not selected so it's not highlighted in red. Then hold the Alt key on your keyboard, give it a click, and you can see just the audio is selected, not the video. I can now hit the backspace key to get rid of that audio track. If you wish to make a duplicate of anything on your timeline, very similar, hold the Alt key, this time give it a click, Keeping the mouse button and the Alt key down 
just drag and you'll make a duplicate of whatever you selected. Now a couple of keyboard shortcuts for you. If you use the left and right keys on your keyboard, you can move forward and backwards a single frame. The up and down keys will allow you to jump forward and backwards between cuts. Select a clip and then you can use the full stop and the comma keys on your keyboard to move that clip forwards or backwards a single frame on your timeline. And lastly, the space bar will play and pause. To add a transition in DaVinci Resolve, open up your effects library in the top left hand corner. And then from the effects library here, expand toolbox, click on video transitions and a list of the transitions will appear. Simply grab the one you want and drag it onto the point where your two bits of footage meet and it will add the transition. Click and hold on the edge of the transition and drag it left and right to lengthen and shorten the transition as required. If you try and drag a transition on and this happens where you cannot actually put the transition on the two clips, you can't put it in the middle, that's usually caused because the transition needs a bit of a buffer. This clip is at its full length, there's no additional footage after this point and the transition needs a few extra frames to make the animation work. So what you can do is just shorten the clip, drag that over now and now if I add the transition again it should now work. If you actually click on the transition, so it's highlighted in red, and then open up the inspector, there are additional settings which you can change to change how the transition looks and feels. Also, with the inspector open, click on a clip on your timeline and you've got the transform and cropping tools. Now to use these, the easiest way, you can either enter the numbers manually or click and hold your mouse in any of the figures and then simply drag to the right or to the left. So we can zoom in and out, we can change positions and we can change angles. You can also come down here, left, right, top and bottom. If you've made any amendments you don't like, let's say on the crop bottom, you can get rid of them by clicking on that to revert to default. If you want to get rid of all your cropping, you can click on this one here to change all of the cropping settings back to what they were. Now on occasion, you may wish to add a solid color onto your timeline. You can do so by clicking on the effects library. So open up your effects library here, go to generators, solid color, and drag that onto your timeline. By default, it will be black, but if you select it and then open the inspector again, in the top you've got generator here and you've got color. You can change the color of that background to whatever you want it to be. Now we're gonna hop into the deliver tab. To create a custom output, select any of the defaults and make any amendments that you need to. Once you're done, click on this icon here and then you can save that as a new preset. Give it a name and then it will appear in this list, as you can see here, I've got one called Alex YouTube. And last but not least, you can use the I and the O keys to select a specific part of your project which you wish to render. So if I only want this particular part, I can use the I key and the O key just to select those parts of the project. I can then add that to the render queue. I can then select other parts of the project and add again to the render queue to add multiple jobs, which can all be rendered at once. That's it folks, I hope it was useful. Real quick one, real to the point. Hopefully all those things were useful. If they were, give me a thumbs up. If you've got any comments or feedback down below, I do loads of DaVinci Resolve stuff on my channel, so don't forget to subscribe to catch the rest of that. Thank you for watching, I'll see you next time. Take it easy, bye.